Okay, this might be a bit of a longer video. Let's see if we can get it done. Okay, so we've seen that. What have we seen? We've looked now that uh, our, ve our velocity, remember your velocity is always tangent to the curve. Okay? And we, we see this relationship, V is equal to R omega. Okay? And we spoke about it in the last one. We also saw that acceleration, rotational acceleration, alpha, is d omega dt. All right? Okay, however, for circular motion at constant speed, circular motion at constant speed, if we look at this guy, remember that, what is the constant speed? It's that the magnitude of that velocity. As it's going around that, in that circular motion, um, even though the, the direction is changing, the magnitude of that velocity is the same. The magnitude of the velocity is the speed. And um, at constant speed, the rotational speed is constant. Okay, I hope you guys are with me. If that guy is constant, then that guy is constant. Which means that the rotational acceleration is zero. Okay, so now we can say, but now I'm confused. I thought that when we're going around the circular motion, we've got this um, acceleration that's pointed towards the center. So the question is, how can rotational acceleration be zero? How can it be zero if we saw that at constant speed we have non-zero centripetal acceleration? And the answer again, which you probably already know, is that remember a vector has two components. The one is the magnitude, the size of that vector, and the other is the direction of that vector. And if either of those change, we have acceleration. Okay? So remember that if this particle is going around uh, on, the, uh, on the perimeter, on the circumference, and the position vector moves through theta, then we know that the velocity vector also moves through theta. And remember that um, the, the acceleration of this vector was due to its changing its direction, not due to its magnitude. Okay? So even though we have a constant magnitude of the velocity, which means we've got a constant speed, which means we have a constant rotational velocity, the acceleration that we're talking about is due to the change in direction of V. Okay? So, even if the object speed is constant, it's ro meaning its rotational acceleration is zero, the changing direction of V means there is a non-zero centripetal acceleration. Okay. Now, let's consider the centripetal acceleration a little bit more. Okay, so re remember that these two triangles are the same, okay, in terms of ratios, etc. So delta R divided by your radius is equal to delta V divided by your velocity, okay? The ratios are the same, and we'll see, wh we'll see wh how, what we're going to do with this. So, if we take this velocity and multiply it up there, okay, and we divide by delta t on both sides, if we let delta t tend to zero, meaning we take small and smaller time intervals, remember we're, whenever you're taking small and smaller time intervals, what you're trying to do is you're trying to get an instantaneous value. So if we take small and smaller time intervals, what is, del what is delta v delta t? That becomes your centripetal acceleration. Remember, your delta V is pointed towards the center, and so that delta V divided by delta T, if you keep making the time interval small and smaller, it becomes dV dt, which is pointed towards the center, which is your centripetal acceleration. And if this goes to zero, uh, tends to zero, then this tends to your velocity.
D uh, R D T. Okay. So now if I've got um, V over here, remember D R D T equals V. This this term over here is V. V times V gives me a V squared divided by R. And so this now is my centripetal acceleration. Centripetal acceleration is defined this way. It is equal to your velocity squared divided by your radius. All right? So before we just spoke about this 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 concept of centripetal acceleration. Now we know how to calculate it. If we know what our velocity is, remember our velocity is a constant, or even if we know what our velocity is at a single point, at an instant, and we've got the radius, then we know that v squared over r gives me this the magnitude of this acceleration that is directed towards the center. Okay, but now we need to make it a negative, and why is that? Because, because if you recall, the radial axis was pointed positive, positively from the axis of rotation to the object, but we know that, your, the, that AC is pointed from the object to the center. So that's why the... Um, the centripetal acceleration or radial acceleration is minus v squared over r. Okay, this is important. v squared over r. That is, that is a component of your acceleration and it is pointed towards the center. How about I stop there and we'll go on in the next one.